last remaining territory on the planet that could have such a designation is Antarctica. In the ice, like a huge entrance to a cave but slanted going down. Antarctica, Earth's southernmost continent, has long captivated the imagination of explorers, scientists, and storytellers alike. But something horrifying happened under the Antarctic ice that made the U.S. Navy shut down Antarctica. Researchers claim they have discovered aliens hidden under the Antarctic ice. Let's see what is actually going on. His airplane is taken control of when he suddenly sees these flying disc-shaped objects around them that lead him to the ground. Amidst the scientific expeditions and environmental research, there are whispers of something more beneath the ice. Stories have circulated for years about hidden operations and secret bases, with the United States Navy often at the center of these tales. Rumors suggest that during their missions to explore and understand this desolate landscape, they stumbled upon something unexpected, evidence of alien life forms hiding under the ice. These claims, surrounded by a mix of skepticism and fascination, propose that Antarctica is not just a place of ice and snow, but a gateway to discoveries that could change our understanding of the universe. So, let's dive into the coolest place on Earth, Antarctica. We're not just talking about ice and cold here, we're also going to explore the wild stories and rumors about the U.S. Navy and aliens. It's like a real-life X-Files episode. Get ready to hear about secret missions, hidden bases, and even extraterrestrial encounters. Keep an open mind, because the truth can be stranger than fiction. Antarctica, the continent of extremes, has always been a beacon for the bold and the curious. Its exploration saga began in the 19th century, a testament to human ambition and resilience. The early explorers, braving unimaginable cold and isolation, laid the groundwork for what would become a ceaseless quest for knowledge. The stories of Ernest Shackleton and Robert Falcon Scott resonate not just as tales of exploration, but as profound narratives of human endeavor against nature's most daunting challenges. The 20th century transformed Antarctica from an explorer's challenge into a global scientific frontier. Research bases sprung up, turning the continent into a living laboratory where scientists from around the world study everything from climate change to astrophysics. Antarctica's extreme environment offers unique conditions for research that, in many cases, cannot be replicated anywhere else on Earth. This scientific goldmine has provided invaluable insights into global systems, influencing our understanding of everything from weather patterns to sea level rise. The U.S. Navy's involvement, particularly through Operation High Jump in the mid-20th century, marked a pivotal moment in Antarctic exploration. With over 4,000 personnel, Operation High Jump was one of the most ambitious expeditions to the continent ostensibly aimed at establishing a research base and testing equipment in polar conditions. Yet, the operation's scale and timing, shortly after World War II, fueled speculation about its true objectives, ranging from military exercises to speculative searches for remnants of lost civilizations or even encounters with extraterrestrial life. In 1947 and 1948, the U.S. Navy carried out a super-important expedition called Operation Windmill, or you could call it the Second Antarctic Developments Project if you're feeling formal. The main goal was to build on the aerial and ground surveys that had been started during Operation High Jump. This expedition was key in mapping out Antarctica and getting a better understanding of a place that was pretty much a big mystery at the time. Commander Gerald L. Ketchum was in charge, and the team worked on checking how accurate the aerial photos were by doing ground surveys, testing out equipment in the freezing cold, and figuring out how to do stuff in really cold weather. The operation utilized two icebreakers, the USS Burton Island, AGB-1, and the USS Edisto, AGB-2, to navigate the icy waters of the Antarctic coast. The expedition targeted areas around the Antarctic Peninsula and the Ross Sea, conducting ground surveys, collecting geological and biological samples, and evaluating the performance of both standard and experimental equipment in the harsh Antarctic environment. Operation Windmill was more than just a cool mission. It helped us make better maps of Antarctica by checking out those aerial maps from Operation High Jump.
We also learned a lot about how to survive in super cold places, which has been really helpful for future polar expeditions. That knowledge helped us plan and do other Antarctic missions, like the ones during the International Geophysical Year, 1957 to 1958. And it's still important today because it laid the foundation for all the science stuff we do in Antarctica with the United States Antarctic Program, USAPE. Operation Deep Freeze, 1, 1955-1956. Operation Deep Freeze. I mark the beginning of the United States' significant and ongoing involvement in Antarctica. Launched in 1955, this operation had a primary goal of establishing the first permanent American base on the continent, a milestone in the exploration and scientific study of Antarctica. McMurdo Sound was chosen as the site for this base due to its accessible location and relatively favorable conditions for year-round operation. The operation was timed to coincide with the International Geophysical Year IGY, of 1957 to 1958 an event that prompted international scientific collaboration on a wide range of geophysical phenomena. The U.S. Navy played a crucial role in Operation Deep Freeze Wumbun, providing logistical support, transportation, and the manpower necessary to construct the base and conduct early scientific research. This included geological, biological, meteorological, and glaciological studies, which laid the groundwork for future scientific endeavors in Antarctica. Operation Deep Freeze II, 1956-1957. Building on the success of the initial operation, Operation Deep Freeze II aimed to continue and expand the U.S. presence in Antarctica. Conducted between 1956 and 1957, this phase focused on further establishing bases and extending the scope of scientific research initiated during the first operation. Additional facilities were constructed at McMurdo Sound to support the growing number of scientists and the broadening research agenda. This phase also saw the establishment of other research stations on the continent and surrounding islands, enhancing the U.S.'s ability to conduct comprehensive scientific studies across Antarctica. One of the key achievements of Operation Deep Freeze II was the establishment of South Pole Station, which provided a platform for high-latitude geophysical research crucial to understanding global weather patterns, atmospheric phenomena, and Earth's magnetic field, among other areas. I am glad for this chance to tell you something about the top of the world, and perhaps about something about the bottom of the world, too. Operation Deep Freeze 3, 1957 to 1958, and subsequent operations. Operation Deep Freeze 3, conducted from 1957 to 1958, aligned with the peak of the International Geophysical Year, during which international scientific focus on the polar regions was at its highest. This phase, and the operations that followed, continued to support and supply American research stations in Antarctica, ensuring the sustainability of scientific research on the continent. These operations were organized on an annual basis, reflecting a long-term commitment to Antarctic exploration and research. Subsequent operations have maintained and expanded the U.S. presence in Antarctica, with logistics and research evolving to meet the changing demands of scientific inquiry and environmental stewardship. The annual resupply missions have become a critical component of the United States Antarctic Program USAP, enabling year-round scientific research that covers a wide range of disciplines from climate change studies to astrophysics. The legacy of the early Operation Deep Freeze missions is profound establishing the infrastructure that supports one of the most extensive scientific research programs in Antarctica. These operations laid the foundation for ongoing international collaboration, environmental conservation efforts. So these spiky bits in the middle, this is actually a mountain range about the size of the European Alps. And our understanding of critical global processes influenced by the Antarctic region. All right, let's get into the juicy part those wild rumors about aliens chilling under Antarctica's ice and the U.S. Navy somehow being in the mix. Ever wondered how these stories got started? It's a mix of Cold War intrigue, a dash of conspiracy, and a healthy dose of human imagination that could give Hollywood a run for its money. The seed of these alien rumors seems to have sprouted sometime after World War II, a period when the world was pretty much a playground for spy novels and sci-fi movies. 
Then comes Operation High Jump, and boy did it throw fuel on the fire. An expedition led by the U.S. Navy to the icy continent right after the war had everyone's eyebrows raised. Officially, it was all about research and testing equipment in polar conditions. Unofficially, that's where the plot thickens and the rumors start dancing. A key figure in spinning this web of alien tales is none other than Admiral Richard E. Byrd, the leader of Operation High Jump. Byrd was a decorated explorer and had a knack for adventure that made him the perfect candidate for spearheading such an expedition. After the operation, there were whispers about Byrd encountering something more than just snow and ice. And we are eager to express our thanks to the American public for having made possible our success. Some say he kept a diary where he talked about entering a warm region beneath the ice, inhabited by an advanced civilization. Though evidence for this diary is as solid as a snowman in summer, it hasn't stopped people from speculating. Then there's the conspiracy theorist's bread and butter, a supposed interview where Bird warned of flying objects that could travel from pole to pole at incredible speeds. While the authenticity of these claims is about as clear as a blizzard, it's easy to see why the story caught on. The thought of a high-ranking Navy officer talking about such things is like finding a treasure map in your attic. You can't help but dive in. Fast forward a few decades, and the internet has become the new breeding ground for these theories. Forums, blogs, and social media platforms have given a voice to anyone with a theory about Antarctica's secret alien bases. Among the choir of conspiracy theorists, some names stand out, like Linda Moulton Howe, a journalist known for her work on cattle mutilations and conspiracy theories, who has also touched on Antarctic mysteries. Her contributions to the narrative have added layers of complexity, weaving together tales of secret expeditions, hidden alien tech, and government cover-ups. Adding to the intrigue are leaked documents, dubiously sourced and of questionable authenticity, that hint at secret operations and hidden agendas in Antarctica. These documents often talk about encounters with extraterrestrial beings and advanced technology buried under the ice. Skeptics and believers parse these documents with equal fervor, searching for proof or disproof of their veracity. What's fascinating is how these stories, regardless of their truth, reflect our collective fascination with the unknown. Antarctica, with its vast, unexplored landscapes, serves as the perfect canvas for our imagination. Sacred texts that tell us there was an antediluvian civilization. The idea that there could be advanced civilizations or even alien life forms hiding beneath its ice taps into our deepest desires for discovery and the uncovering of universal secrets. The allure of Antarctica is not just about what is known to be true, but also about the possibility of what could be true. There are many stories and rumors about Antarctica, such as aliens and secret military operations. Even if these stories are hard to believe, they reflect the fact that there are still many mysteries in the world, and Antarctica is a place where these mysteries can be explored. These stories make Antarctica's story even more interesting and exciting. Now let's talk about the most awaited crashed UFOs and recovery operations that us Navy did secretly. Have you heard the whispers of what lies beneath the icy expanses of Antarctica? There's chatter, not just any chatter, but the kind that tickles your curiosity and has you leaning in closer. Stories are floating around. Yes, about the U.S. Navy and their clandestine expeditions deep into the frozen unknown. The gist? They're not just braving the cold for science or exploration. No, these missions have a more out-of-this-world objective. They're rumored to be on the hunt for crashed UFOs, hidden away in the ice, far from prying eyes. This is not like any normal recovery operation. This is about top-secret work that is kept very secretive. We are talking about alien technology, spacecraft that might change our understanding of the universe, and possibly even proof of life from outside of Earth. If the rumors are true, this could be a game changer. But the secrecy surrounding this all is even more interesting. It's like they've found something incredibly valuable, maybe even the Holy Grail. After all, confirming the existence of extraterrestrial life or technology would indeed be a modern-day grail. 
Yet, for all the whispers and leaked stories, concrete evidence remains as elusive as a mirage. No photos, no documents, nothing you can hold up and say, see, I told you so. Skeptics will tell you it's all a tall tale, a mix of Cold War era secrecy and our innate love for a good mystery, and maybe they're right. But the Antarctic is vast, its secrets buried deep beneath layers of ice and decades of intrigue. Who's to say what's really out there? And then there's the tale that ties it all together, blending history with the edge of science fiction, the legend of a secret Nazi base buried somewhere in Antarctica's endless white. Yeah, you heard that right. Amid the chilling winds and beneath the aurora-filled skies, whispers persist about Operation High Jump, stumbling upon something straight out of an adventure novel. Base 211, also known as New Swabia. This wasn't supposed to be a normal research outpost. This was something far more intriguing. The theory goes that the Nazis, during their brief stint in Antarctica before the world was engulfed in war, managed to establish a base of operations that was not just for strategizing their next moves, but was deeply involved in UFO research or, hold your breath, actually making contact with extraterrestrials. It's like a hidden fortress in the most isolated place on Earth, housing secrets not of this world. Advanced technology, perhaps engines that could defy gravity, or weapons that sound like they belong in a sci-fi movie, all nestled in ice, far from the war-ravaged lands to the north. The very idea sends shivers down your spine, doesn't it? Not just because of the cold, but because of the possibilities. What if, in their desperation to overcome their enemies, the Nazis had found allies among the stars? Or even more tantalizing, what if they had stumbled upon relics of an ancient, advanced civilization buried beneath the ice? This part of the story, like a mirage, is as captivating as it is elusive. No concrete proof has surfaced to turn the legend into fact. No undeniable evidence of extraterrestrial engines of war or maps to hidden bases has come to light. Yet the narrative endures, fed by bits and pieces of evidence that some swear by and others scoff at. In the grand tapestry of Antarctic mysteries, the tale of Base 211 adds a vibrant thread known as Base 211. Hitler and the Nazis were particularly interested in Antarctica. Weaving together the threads of time desperation, the human yearning for discovery, and our timeless fascination with the unknown. In Antarctica, there is a mysterious area called the No-Fly Zone. People say that this area is off-limits to everyone, even explorers. Rumors say that something extraordinary is hidden there, possibly something from another world. Vast stretches of ice, seemingly untouched and serene, yet allegedly concealing alien bases or artifacts beneath their frosty veneer. The speculation suggests that these areas are so hot, metaphorically speaking of course, because we're still talking about Antarctica, that they've been slapped with a no-fly status. The reason? To keep whatever's hidden there, be it extraterrestrial tech or perhaps even visitors from another world, safely out of the public eye and the hands of curiosity seekers. People like to imagine these places called no-fly zones. They think that it's a secret place the government doesn't want people to see. It's a mysterious and exciting idea, isn't it? The idea that there could be secret places on Earth that are off-limits, just to hide the truth. So let's talk about something even more out there. Underground alien bases in Antarctica. Yep, you heard that right. There are stories floating around that the US Navy didn't just stumble across something strange they found entrances leading deep down into the Earth. And what's supposed to be down there? Massive bases filled with aliens and their high-tech gadgets. These aren't just any old bases, though. We're talking about huge complexes where aliens and humans supposedly work together, sharing knowledge and technology. Under the ice, lights blinking from machines, we can't even begin to understand and beings from another world walking alongside humans. It's the stuff of science fiction, but some folks believe it's all hidden right beneath the surface of Antarctica's icy wilderness. The idea is that these bases are a hub for alien activity on Earth. Uh, I was informed in the course of my official duties of a multi-decade uh, UAP crash retrieval and reverse engineering program a place where they can live in peace, away from our prying eyes, 
and maybe even help us out from the shadows. The technology down there? It's said to be centuries ahead of anything we've got up here on the surface. From energy sources that could solve all our problems to gadgets that could cure diseases and extend our lives. But, as you can guess, finding solid proof for these underground bases is like trying to catch smoke with your bare hands. Photos, videos, documents. None have surfaced that can stand up to real scrutiny. It's all whispers and rumors, stories passed around on the internet and among those who love a good conspiracy theory. And yet, the mystery of it all keeps us hooked. The thought that there might be more to our world, hidden depths beneath the ice, secrets that could change everything we know about our place in the universe. It's a reminder that, no matter how much we learn, there's always more out there, waiting to be discovered. Whether these underground alien bases are real or just a figment of our collective imagination, they certainly make you wonder about the possibilities. Antarctica isn't just a land of ice and snow, it's a scientific playground that's as fascinating as it is freezing. Think of it as Earth's own natural laboratory, tucked away at the bottom of the world, where the conditions are so extreme they can teach us a ton about our planet, and maybe even others. First off, Antarctica's environment is unique. It's the coldest, windiest, and driest continent. This place is so alien, it might as well be another planet, which is precisely why scientists are all over it like penguins on a fish. The extreme cold and isolation make it the perfect place to study everything from climate change to space itself. One of the coolest things, pun intended scientists do down there, is drill ice cores. These are basically frozen time capsules. Each layer of ice traps air bubbles from thousands of years ago, giving scientists a snapshot of Earth's past atmosphere. By analyzing these bubbles, researchers can figure out everything from past temperatures to CO2 levels, painting a picture of how our climate has changed over millennia. It's like reading Earth's diary, and man, does it have some stories to tell. Then there's the hunt for meteorites. Antarctica is a meteorite magnet, and not just because it's a vast, open space. The dark rocks stand out against the white ice, making them easier to spot. Plus, the movement of the ice sheet helps concentrate these space rocks in certain areas, like cosmic lost and founds. Studying these meteorites can teach us about the building blocks of our solar system, and sometimes they even contain stardust older than the sun. Talk about ancient history, but maybe the most mind-blowing are the extremophiles. These are microorganisms that don't just survive in extreme conditions, they thrive. From boiling hydrothermal vents to the acidic, arsenic-laden waters of bloodfalls, these little critters are living proof of life's resilience. Studying them helps scientists understand the limits of life on Earth, and guess what? It also gives them clues about life on other planets. If life can hang out in Antarctica's extreme spots, why not on Mars or Europa? Antarctica's sheer isolation and pristine environment also make it an unparalleled site for astronomical observations. The cold, dry air is perfect for peering into the depths of space, free from the light pollution and atmospheric distortions that plague other parts of the world. It's like having a front row seat to the universe's greatest hits, no telescope required, well, maybe a little. These speculative theories about extraterrestrial activity in Antarctica have captivated imaginations worldwide, bolstered by a mix of alleged evidence and whistleblower testimonies. You've said that the U.S. In has intact spa spacecraft. You said that the government has alien bodies or alien species. Let's take a closer look at these claims and the so-called evidence that fuels them. One of the primary fuels for alien theories in Antarctica is satellite imagery showing unexplained anomalies. Proponents of these theories point to strange patterns and objects visible in satellite photos, which they claim are unnatural and indicative of alien activity. These images often show what appear to be large openings or caves, some even suggesting the presence of massive hidden structures beneath the ice. Critics argue that these anomalies can be explained through natural geological processes, Ice formations, crevasses, and the continent's dynamic environment constantly reshape the landscape, creating formations that can appear artificial to the untrained eye. 
Despite this, the allure of satellite images remains strong among theorists, serving as a cornerstone of speculation about extraterrestrial bases. The speculative theories about Antarctica often draw strength from individuals claiming to have inside knowledge of secret operations or encounters with non-human entities. These whistleblowers come from various backgrounds, including military personnel, scientists, and contractors, who allege that their work in Antarctica exposed them to secrets far beyond the realm of known science. One common thread in these testimonies is the description of advanced technology and structures buried under the ice, purportedly far beyond human capabilities. Some whistleblowers speak of being taken to underground facilities where they encountered not only evidence of advanced civilizations, but also living extraterrestrials. These stories often describe beings that are collaborating with human scientists or military forces in secretive projects. The speculative claims about aliens in Antarctica are compelling, and for many, offer an exciting narrative that challenges official accounts of what's happening on the continent. However, a critical analysis of the claimed evidence raises questions about the veracity of these theories. Satellite images, for instance, while intriguing, are subject to interpretation. What some see as undeniable proof of alien structures, others view as curious natural phenomena deserving scientific investigation, but not necessarily indicative of extraterrestrial activity. The debate over these images often boils down to personal belief rather than conclusive evidence. Whistleblower testimonies, while fascinating, also present challenges. Verifying these accounts is difficult, as they often lack corroborative evidence and are sometimes contradicted by known scientific and logistical facts about Antarctica. The secretive nature of military and scientific missions in Antarctica does little to dispel these theories, instead often serving to deepen the mystery and suspicion among those inclined to believe in hidden extraterrestrial activity. The theories about aliens in Antarctica don't exist in a vacuum. Pentagon review of decades of government investigations into UFO sightings has found no evidence any of those sightings were extraterrestrial. They're part of a larger context of UFO and alien speculation that has captivated humans for decades. This broader fascination with extraterrestrial life and government cover-ups provides a fertile ground for speculative theories to take root and grow. Antarctica's allure as a remote, difficult-to-access place enhances its mystique. Its harsh environment and research difficulties fuel speculation about hidden secrets. This isolation, coupled with human curiosity, creates a fertile ground for speculative theories to thrive. So, let's zoom out from Antarctica and set our sights a bit higher, like outer space high. We've been obsessed with the question, are we alone in the universe, for ages? Turns out, science has been on this case big time, especially with projects like SET, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, and the hunt for exoplanets that might be cozy enough for life as we know it. SETI is like the universe's ultimate cold call campaign, listening for signals from advanced civilizations. Imagine a giant cosmic ear, tuned to the frequencies of the cosmos, waiting for a ping from the stars that says, hey, we're here too. It's a long shot, but if ET decides to phone home, SETI wants to be on the receiving end. Then there's the exoplanet scene. Thanks to missions like Kepler and TESS, we found thousands of these alien worlds orbiting distant stars. Some of them sit in the Goldilocks zone, where it's not too hot, not too cold, but just right for liquid water to exist. And where there's water, there might be life. These discoveries have blown the door wide open on the possibilities of finding a place out there that could support life, or even, dare we say, be home to living beings. Now, let's bring it back to ice worlds because, apparently, water is a big deal when it comes to life. Moons like Europa, orbiting Jupiter, and Enceladus, orbiting Saturn, have scientists all kinds of excited. Why? Because they've got massive oceans hiding under their icy shells. We're talking about vast, deep waters that could harbor life. The conditions there are a far cry from a sunny day at the beach, but extremophiles on Earth, remember those tough little critters thriving in extreme conditions? Hint at life's remarkable adaptability. So, could there be alien fish swimming in the extraterrestrial seas of Europa or Enceladus? It's a tantalizing thought, 
These ice worlds represent the kind of places where we might find life beyond Earth. Not necessarily little green men, but maybe some form of life that calls these icy depths home. The search for extraterrestrial life isn't just about proving we're not alone. It's a journey of understanding the conditions that foster life, the resilience of life in the face of extreme environments, and how life begins in the first place. Finding life beyond Earth, even the microbial kind, would be a game changer, offering profound insights into biology, chemistry, and the very fabric of the universe. We've taken quite the journey from the icy expanse of Antarctica with its whispers of alien secrets, through the scientific endeavors to understand our own planet and up to the stars in search of life beyond Earth. It's been a wild ride, blending the lines between known facts and the tantalizing allure of the unknown. Throughout, we've seen how Antarctica serves not just as a final frontier on Earth, but as a mirror reflecting our broader quest for knowledge and understanding. From the speculative theories about alien bases beneath its ice to the rigorous scientific research conducted in its harsh conditions, Antarctica embodies the human spirit of exploration and curiosity. The search for extraterrestrial life, whether through SETI or the study of exoplanets and ice worlds, extends this curiosity beyond our earthly confines, pushing us to ponder our place in the universe. The possibilities of life in outer space from microorganisms in the oceans of Europa to signals from advanced civilizations remind us of the vastness of the cosmos and the richness of life's tapestry. So it's time to wrap up this video. Hit that subscribe button for more videos like this.